going to try and not tie myself in knots, isn't it? There you go. But, uh, yes, thanks. Um, I'm Ken Delgarno. I'm going to just briefly introduce you to the Arthritis Research UK Tissue Engineering Centre. I know I'm an engineer. Um, by trade, I'm involved in, in this, and so the tissue engineering bit is the end of it. I look around and I'm quite pleased that Tim's explained things about osteoarthritis because I'm perhaps the least qualified person in the room to, to, to talk to anybody about osteoarthritis. Um, also, uh, there are some benefits to coming last in a lot of things that I was going to say have been said already. Uh, so thanks to Arthur and Tim, I don't really need to explain that a centre is normally lots of universities working together. Uh, in this case, oops, it over here, it might work. Um, it's Cambridge, uh, led by, and the centre is led by Andrew McCaskey, who's a professor of orthopaedics there. Uh, we have Keele University and a uh, specialist orthopaedic <coughs> hospital in Oswald Street. Uh, in York, there's uh, Bone Biology in Aberdeen, Rheumatology Cartledge, and in Newcastle, myself, as an engineer, and Anne Dickinson, who's a, a clinician who, who works in terms of transplants. Pretty hard. Um, actually, Tim's done me a favour and explained to you how common osteoarthritis is and how it becomes much more common, getting to the stage where you're at 20-30% of the population later on in life. And so it's a, a, a big problem, particularly uh, for individuals in society. One of the things I wanted to, to just make a point about early on is that it's not just wear and tear, it's not an inevitable progression towards this end state disease. Um, partly osteoarthritis is about the genes, partly it's about <coughs> what, you, what you do, uh, your sort of phenotype with, with, those, with your body and with those genes. It's about how you walk and how you run or, or whether you walk and whether you run. Um, those kind of things as well, so, which is driven by the environment you're in, which leads to biology and mechanics. And so, so all of these things uh, are interrelated, so not separate <coughs> events whatsoever, and it's really difficult to unpick which of them go together to, to, to result in a person getting osteoarthritis. <coughs> so they're the kind of, kind of primary factors. The secondary is, is trauma. So if you break a leg or whatever, that affects your other joints over the course of your life. And so that, that's a sort of significant... <coughs> It can, something that can trigger the, the onset of osteoarthritis later on as well. When one of the, the things that the centre is focusing on is, is sort of, sort of the earlier stages of the disease. One of the things we'd like to be able to do is, is to treat smaller uh, defects earlier. And, and this slide just shows you this is sort of prevalence going from, from young to, to old. Um, and the particular disorders going along and it's reasonable to say so, so at this stage people uh, will agree in general about what osteoarthritis is and what the treatment for it is it, it's, predominantly, it, it's clear what it looks like and it, it's clear that, that normally it results in a joint replacement earlier on there's a number of conditions uh, which, which sort of are sometimes stages on the road to osteoarthritis um, and it means that earlier stage of osteoarthritis happening in this is red box, it doesn't come from a single place. I'm just sort of reinforcing what I was saying before. It's not a single clinical cohort. It's not a single collection of, of predictable people who, are, who can be, be identified and, and dealt with earlier. It's several sort of distinct cohorts and, and stages. And so we need to be able to sort of understand what's going on with the disease at this stage as well, as well as, uh, as thinking about what happens at the end of it. If we want to be able to treat conditions earlier and better, then that means generating solutions that help the people who, who live in that red box, rather than, than, than waiting on them a bit. And Tim showed you what happens when your cartilage degenerates, and then this is a picture of a knee. Um, and most people I've said in the past, won't we believe that, that cartilage can't really repair itself. Um, well, this is the same knee six months after <coughs> this picture was taken. Uh, and the, the difference was achieved uh, purely by a clinician realigning a joint. Um, but it doesn't normally happen. So 19 times out of 20 or 95 times out of 100, 90, 
this, this doesn't happen. But there are lots of examples about that show that, that cartilage can regenerate itself. The main problem is that we just can't make it do it reliably. We can't make it do it every time we want it to, and we can't do, do that. And so there is regenerative capacity in the joint. Uh, and what the tissue engineering centre is about is how can, we, how can we help the body to do this kind of a thing more reliably and, and make it happen more generally. So tissue engineering then, um, I'll say tissue engineering used to be simple. <laughs> it used to be so you have somebody who's not very well and you have some cells. And the, the sort of classical view of tissue engineering was that you'd take the cells, you'd combine them with the biomaterial, a matrix or a scaffold, as the, the, the jargon has it. You'd maybe add some biomolecules to, to help things move along a bit. And yet you'd grow some tissue and you'd put that into the person and that would fix them. And that would be that would thing. And so 10 to 15 years ago, this, was sort of, this is what tissue engineering and regenerative medicine was going to be. And it just, yes, sometimes things get more complicated, uh, and I'll move along. So that first of all, clearly, you have to figure out where your cells are going to come from. And there was a view that there would be a big cell factory, and you'd be able to, to sort of phone up and order a particular type of cells to treat a particular type of disease, and that would then do it all the way around. Um, turns out, so that one of the things, in order to have a cell factory, and there are some, not many, um, you have to be able to demonstrate that the cells that you get from this cell factory are not going to hurt any of the people who you might want to put them in. And that turns out to be a really complicated and difficult thing to demonstrate, and <laughs> so not to say very, very expensive. So the alternative approach is that you take them from the person who's not well in the first place. So, and this is sort of slightly easier uh, and, and sort of it's not necessarily safer, but it's easier to demonstrate the safety of it because, in essence, you're taking the cells out. I don't know, scaffold going back. What's going back to the patient is their own cells. It's not something that's going to be necessarily likely to cause them any difficulties or, or disease or, or rejection or those kind of things. So that was the first kind of difficulty in that. But to get there, to go from there to there to there takes time, as we'll see when we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then another problem was that actually making tissue, making real proper tissue outside the body is really hard as well, quite difficult. Um, and people then quickly sort of realised that the best place to make tissue is inside the body. Um, all of your bodies are quite good at, being, at making tissue or else you wouldn't be here in the, in the first place. And so often this step is going to get skipped and you put the, the cells together, the scaffold molecule, and put it straight into the body. And there's another shortcut you can take. If you don't need the scaffold and the biomaterials, then you can put the cells straight into the body, and that's what people call a cellular, cellular therapy. Then, all the complication is that, that there's more than one way of taking cells out of the body and putting them back in. Uh, you can do it over a long time. Uh, and, and sort of take the cells out and manipulate them in some ways, or you could do it over a rel relatively short time and put them straight back into the body and try and do that within a single operation. And you can do that either as a cellular therapy or with a scaffold. And so you've got further options move along. And then finally, uh, there's another option which is so people call it acellular tissue engineering, so people argue about whether it's tissue engineering at all where you, you start off with your scaffold, you add the right collection of biomolecules, and you put that into the body. But the idea is that these particular biomolecules that you've added onto the scaffold uh, try and attract the right cells from inside your body to that location to do the repair process as you move along. And so the initial simple picture of what tissue engineering was gets get quite complicated. Um, and the, the main kind of role of the Arthritis Research Tissue Engineering Centre is to, to unpick this picture and, and figure out which of these strategies are effective and scalable for osteoarthritis. And to do that, building on, on two things, partly there's, there's new tissue engineering strategies, so how you do all these, the element, figuring out the cells, figuring out the scaffolds, figuring out the biomolecules. And that's work that we're doing across the centre. And we're also learning from current 
cell based sort of, sort of uh, therapies and treatments for osteoarthritis. And there's two of those, uh, really. The, the first of these is what's known as autologous chondrocyte implantation, and this is one that's based on taking somebody's cells, developing a population of them, and then reintroducing them back into the body. So if somebody has a, a, a defect in the, in the cartilage, you pick some nice healthy cartilage, pick that out, grow lots of cartilage cells, chondrocytes, and then you put a, dress the, the, the defect, put a patch over the top of it, and inject these cells into the back of it, and, and use the cells to, to regenerate the tissue. And that, so that works quite well, but it's very long-winded, and, and quite a sort of expensive, long procedure. Uh, the other approach is, is <laughs> I think this is a slightly more agricultural, orthopedic surgeon type of, of way of doing things, which is microfracture. Uh, in this case, if you've got a, a, a defect on the, the joint surface, what you do is clean it up a bit, and then you batter a hole through the bone uh, to let the blood come out, because that brings your own stem cells out with it, in an attempt to use them to stimulate the, the, the repair processes around the cartilage. Um, and, uh, yes, there, there's a picture of <laughs> Sort of, sort of that, ha that happening there. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it, it is a sort of particularly wince inducing uh, way of going about it, but, but it's the, the nature of it. And so these two exist, and this um, is something that's done at one of the centres at the, the orthopaedic hospital in Oswestry. They did quite a lot of this. Uh, this is left, not done so much. It, it, this, so this approach is less successful, uh, and this approach isn't fabulously scalable but it is still used in the UK at the moment. And so when you then take those types of approaches and see what the, the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence say, actually they're, yes, they, they're still recommending joint replacement for end stage OA, but there's no recommended surgical treatment for early stage OA. So the treatments that exist at the moment aren't good enough or aren't scalable enough to get to that proportion of the population. And so what we're doing in the, in the sensor is looking to combine these tissue engineering technologies with minimally invasive surgical solutions in order to treat osteoarthritis. And there's four themes across the centre to what we're doing, <coughs> looking at the, the role of stem cells in osteoarthritis, looking at if, if we understand this better, how do we use that to choose the cells that we'll use to treat individual people with, um, stem cells and, and scaffolds for these matrix materials. How do we combine them most effectively? And then theme four is, is clinical. How do we deliver that to a third of the population in, in an effective and, 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 and useful manner? And so that's the, the overall centre. I, I was just going to say one bit more thing. My area is, is, is here. It's stem cells and scaffolds. And the, the scaffolds really are things that we'd look to, to introduce to the joint. So you, it might be to replace cartilage, to replace bone, or to replace bone and cartilage. Uh, they tend to be very porous and, and, and strong and interesting things, so that we can add cells to them or, or not. And there's a demo that we've got outside just looking at how we're using um, 3D printing technologies to make these types of scaffolds. And so this is a, a 3D printer. It's like the one that's outside, not exactly the same. And we can use it to make these really porous uh, structures and scaffolds, which, and you can't quite see them here, so, so these bits where it's, it's looking a bit, a bit duller down here is where we have cells seated on them. Um, and this is a, a sort of a, a picture where the, each of these little purple dots is a cell that's been seated onto these structures as well. And these types of shapes give cells a, a, a nice environment to grow and multiply and develop and become tissues. Um, but we're not doing anything, there's no cells out there at the moment, but if you see Natasha <coughs> over lunch, then she'll give you a demo of how these, these types of technologies make these scaffolds and how, they, how we, can, we, can, we can make them work. Um, that's fine, and equally Rhea will be by the poster as well, so it's just on, on the right as you go out. So that was it, so it's a, a, what we have, a multi-university centre, novel tissue engineering uh, treatments for early stage osteoarthritis. We have, it, it involves surgeons, biologists, material scientists, and, and even engineers. 
and uh, we're trying to learn from existing approaches to make large scale treatments with new sorry large scale treatment possible with the new tissue engineering strategies that are emerging. Okay. Thank you.